now I'm going to be addressing the topic, is the tithe commanded in the New Testament? Is the tithe commanded in the New Testament? Uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, no. Unfortunately for the pastors that want to amass wealth and that have been preaching tight to Christians and taking money from them, you know, when people themselves are in poverty, no, the tight is not commanded in the New Testament. And uh, also, uh, you know, <laughs> it's not only not commanded in the New Testament, the tight is an Old Testament practice just meant for the Jewish nation. And the tight is a symbol of the coming Christ, of the Christ to come. You know, if we look in the book of Hebrews, chapter 7, verse 4 and 7, it says that uh, the tithe is a symbol of Christ. It says in Hebrews 7, 4 7, and 17, Now consider how great this man was, unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tent of the spoils. That is where you know, tithe started from. For he testified, thou art a priest forever, even after the order of Melchizedek, talking about Jesus. So the first time tithe was even practiced in the Old Testament was through Abraham giving to Melchizedek. Now, Abraham gave to Melchizedek as a symbolic act and as a prophetic act that, see, Melchizedek is a man that never had beginning or the end, or never had father or mother, and, you know, he was an eternal being, which is a symbol of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, that is telling us that just like Jesus Christ is the Lord of the Sabbath, that's why we don't worship on Sabbath again, because Jesus Christ has come, we worship Jesus instead of the Sabbath. The same thing with tithe and offering. In the New Testament, we are no longer supposed to give tithe again. Offering, yes, but not tithe. Why? Because tithe was given to by Abraham to Melchizedek as a symbol of the coming Christ. Now that is a shadow of things to come. Now that Jesus Christ has come, he becomes the tithe. So even if we are going to practice tithe, we our our tithe is in Christ. We worship him, we love him, we give to him. But how do you give? Because before we are supposed to give to the to, to the Levite, to the to, to the temple and other places, to you know, to you know, so that they would distribute to the poor as a symbol of the coming Christ. But now that Christ has come, there is no commandment like that. There is no more law. So tithe is no more a law to Christians. We are no more under obligation because Christ has already come. Just like we are no more under the obligation of Sabbath to be worshiping Jesus, I mean God, on Saturdays. Christ has already come. It is Him now we worship. Now the same thing with Christ with giving. We give to Him. Him, to glorify him, to thank him for his love for us. So Melchizedek was a symbol of Christ. Now that Christ has come, so how do we now give to Christ? We give to Christ. So how do we now give to Christ? Jesus said, since Sabbath is meant for him, he is the Lord of the Sabbath, worship him. But in case of money, what do we do? In case of tithe, Jesus also, the same way, since Mal, um, no, it was you know, tithe was given by Melchizedek to, I mean, by Abraham to Melchizedek. Now Jesus is the Melchizedek. Jesus is the owner of the tithe. He is the one we are supposed to give to. And Jesus told us how to do that. He said, "I was naked." When it means when you give to the naked, you give to Jesus. He said, "I was hungry." It means that when you when you want to give your tithe now or offering, you give it to the hungry. If you give to the hungry, he said, I am the one who was hungry. You remember he told the ones on the right hand side, he said, I was hungry and you fed me. I was naked and you clothed me. So it is when you give to the hungry, the naked, the poor, the destitute, the widows, the orphans, the people in prison, the people in hospital, that is when you give in to Jesus. He is not my words. These are the words of Jesus himself. He said, I am the one. They said, when did we see you hungry? He said, when you give to that hungry man, it is me you gave it to. So for you to give, if you really want to give to Jesus, if you really want to love Jesus and give something to him, go and look for the destitute in the sight. Why? Because God is love. God is love. God loves the people who are weak. God loves the people who are poor. God loves the people who are destitute who are, you know, who cannot help themselves. God is almighty God and the purpose of power is that power must be used to lift all those people who are down. Power must be used to support those people who cannot support themselves. Power of love and power of God, the greatness of God. His power is demonstrated in the sense, in the, in the form of his love. His love is the demonstration of his power. So through love, that's why Jesus, when he was here on earth, what was he doing? He was using, he was, he was feeding the poor. Why? 
Why? You know, because it was love. That is, you know, th that is the nature. And he's showing us that wh why was he feeding 4,000? Why did he feed 5,000? So that we will see the example that this is where the heart of God is. If you have money, go and feed 5,000. Go and feed 4,000. Go. Nobody should go hungry in your city in Nigeria if you have tight and offering. That's what tight and offering is meant for. So all of us, we are supposed to gather our tithe and offering, not to take to church anymore, like in the Old Testament. Not to take to church, I mean to, to the temple anymore, because we are now the temple of the Almighty God. People are temple of the Almighty God, and people are carriers of God's image. So whenever you see any human being that is in need, that is God that is in need. That is Jesus that is in need. But the people of the Acts of the Apostles, they got this right, because they knew exactly the heart of God. So if you look at the Acts of the Apostles in the in the, begin, in the beginning of the church or in the Jerusalem church, you will see Acts chapter 4, verse 34 to 37. The Bible says, Neither was there any among them that lacked. Why is it that they didn't lack? Because all the money that was coming, even though they didn't collect tithe and offering, but people were giving freely. They were bringing their uh, free offering and selling their properties so that none of them would be poor, so that there will be no poor person among them. That is Christianity. Can you imagine if all the churches in Nigeria to Today, will be given 90% of all the money that is coming to take care of their members and to take care of the poor people in the society, and only 10% to the priest. Because in the Levite, during the uh, Old Testament, for the Levite and the priest, only 10% was meant for them. But the rest of the money was meant for the poor people. And I'm going to show you that passage too. But here in the Acts of the Apostles, it says, and they brought the prices of the things that were sold, the possessions and the houses that were, and the land that were sold and laid them at the feet of the apostle and then they were distributed to every man according to his need and that is Acts chapter 4 verse 34 now let me show you another scripture that will show you that actually they, they, they even in the Old Testament when you they gather offering and they gather tithe and offering it was used not just for the church or for the priest it was used for the poor in Deuteronomy chapter 12 verses 11 to 12 Deuteronomy 12 11 to 12 it says then there shall be a place which the Lord your God shall choose to cause his name to dwell there thither ye shall bring all that I command you, your bond offerings and your sacrifices, your tithe and uh, your heave offering of your hand, and all your choice vows uh, which you vow to the Lord. And ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God, you and your sons, so tithe and offering are supposed to be used to take care of your family, your daughters, your main servants, your maid servants, and then the Levite, and then the foreigners that are in your territory. So, tithe and offering is not just meant for the church. It's meant to take care of anybody that is in need around you, even your own family members. Because today, unfortunately, many people give tithe and offering to church and their family members are suffering. Their, family, their fathers are suffering. Their relatives are suffering. The parents that send them to school and give them the access to whatever they have today, they are suffering while they are feeding the pastors and they are feeding the church. But in the in, 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 I will show you in another scripture, in another episode, uh, where you will see that, you know, the Bible actually, even in the Old Testament, is said that the tithe and offering should be used for the poor. Tithe in the Old Testament, even in the Old Testament, tithe was never collected from the poor. God didn't command the poor to give tithe. He commanded everybody else to give tithe to the poor. If money is supposed to be given to the poor, not collected from them. I will show you that one, because of my time here, I will show you that one in one of the uh, episodes that I'm going to do before we finish. So, you know, please, the tithe is not meant for Old Testament, I mean for New Testament believers. If, even though Jesus never condemned it, Jesus never condemned it, because in, in um, Matthew in Matthew 23, 23, the, Jesus actually said that, yes, if you want to give, you know, tithe and offering, give, but don't neglect the weightier matters of the law. He said, yeah, you give, he said you are giving tithe, of this and this, but you are neglecting the weightier matters of the love. Matthew 23, 23. What are the material weightier matters of the love? Love, kindness, justice, mercy, faithfulness. Those mercy to the poor, no, love to the poor, kindness to the poor, those are weightier matters. They are more important in the eyes of God than tithe and offering. Thank you so much.